you're listening to bro down podcast all fucking day oh yeah hey everybody welcome back to the bro down podcast i'm tim fulton and i'm andy smith and we are doing the fight recap for ufc fight night poirier versus hooker damn gina dude why are we why are these fights so good i don't know but they were absolutely extreme they were kind of spoiled lately with these no they've been fucking cards ridiculous well, let's fucking get right into it dude we are gonna get right into it and we're gonna start off with the main event dustin poirier versus dan hooker i after the first two rounds i i'd I, like there's no way it's going five there's yeah. no way it's going five i would have bet not i would have bet a lot that it wasn't going five fucking rounds. Dude, it, they were throwing fucking bombs. They were going 100% for the first two rounds. It was ridiculous. I've the never p- seen, well, not never seen, but, you know, every fight is always like the fucking yeah. best fight you've ever seen. But it's the that's the one of the best, if not the best fight I've seen in the last six months, year. Yeah. It was insane. The, I mean, we could, we could rank them. I don't know. I dude, don't. It's, there's so many good fights, but this one was ridiculous. But the shots that they were taking were fucking ridiculous, and Hooker's eye was was sliced way to fuck open. Uh, Poirier, that one, I thought he was getting knocked out. That one, the the one exchange, he he was yeah, he got rocked. He kept dropping his hands, and I thought he got like stunned on his feet. It's fucking. I, 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 I have nothing to say with that. I don't. Who, no one wants to fight either of those fucking guys. No. Um, no. Yo, even your girlfriend was fucking into it. Dude. She was like, it's punch for punch. It's it's blow for blow. Yeah. How do you do this? Like, what the fuck? It was awesome, dude. Like, uh, it, it, I, I, we didn't really learn anything, though. I will say that by the end of the fight, they, they really were toe for toe at the beginning of that. I A lot of people I were seeing on Twitter was saying that Hooker had it two to one by at the end of the third, which I could definitely see. Yeah. But for the most part, I would have considered it even. But by the end of it, I would say Hooker was like a smidge more tired. His gas tank was a little bit more empty than Poirier. I don't think that anyone could be confident in judging that fight. Oh, no, no. It was so back and forth with the takedowns, the submission attempts. Yeah. I, I'm i not – I'm happy that Dustin won because I, I was kind of rooting for him because he's a nicer guy. Yeah, I like him too. But if Hooker won – I mean, I think they made the right decision. But if Hooker won, how the fuck can you? You'd have to go back and watch that round for round and like write shit down, yeah, to actually yeah. make an, a, a a good assessment of it. Because by the end of the first, by the end of the second round, I stopped judging in my head because I didn't think it was going to go yeah. to the judges. But we, what did we learn from that? That they're tough fuckers who who know how to fight. That this division is fucking stacked is what we learned. Yeah, dude, we did like. I want. I just. I. I want more. I don't know what to say about the fight. I don't know. I don't have the words for that fight. Oh, I will. They did score one round, ten eight. I one think of, that would have been the fifth. But even then, Hooker had a takedown. I know that they're scoring it more leniently, like they're putting ten eights yeah. out a little more. But still, that seems a little. I would be interested to see what round was the ten eight round. I was trying. I spent a good amount of time trying to think about it. Yeah, I couldn't figure it out. But yeah, I. I mean, this. That's fight of the year contender right yeah. there oh yeah 100%. yeah 100 percent. so let's go on to a <laughs> another crazy, crazy fight easy um, fight mike perry versus mickey gall uh gall was looking really sharp with his striking he's yeah. known as a, as a as a grappler but mike perry is just a fucking wild dude right he doesn't have a corner any cornerman he has a cut man but his cornerman is his girlfriend who i doesn't i don't believe fights at all or trains really but she was the one apparently that was doing all his pad work with him, and he didn't. He only sparred like twice how for the you, whole you... camp. But he came out and he looked very composed for for as far as how we've seen him sometimes in the past, and he looked fantastic. Yeah, this was as professional as I've ever seen him. Yeah, he looked fantastic, and against somebody like Mickey Gall, I mean, people give Mickey Gall a lot of shit. Yeah, because he fought CM Punk. Okay, and. You know, I think it's unjust, unjustly so, because, you know, everyone's like, oh, well, you beat CM Punk because you're professional wrestler. He didn't do shit. But the kid's, no, the kid's fucking legit. Yeah. Right? He's legit. And Mike Perry couldn't put him away. And he he's a fucking animal. Like, there was times in there where Mickey Gall did everything right, but Perry was just such a fucking gorilla. He's like, nope, nope, sorry. Different kind of human. 
<laughs> they said at one point they're he, instead of like stuffing the takedown, you're just like, no, I'm stronger. You're not. Yeah, stronger. that's no. basically what it was. Yeah. But even Perry, like he's a big dude. There was for a, a small dude. Yeah, but he again, another thing, made weight without really anyone in his camp. Like he's man. It's it's so such an anomaly because usually wild guys need like some direct like somebody to like direct them focus yeah yeah and it would you could say that it was his his girlfriend but she she doesn't know what to do with that stuff yeah yeah i I don't think because she's not trained so what the fuck but the fact that he did everything himself and he came out and had a performance like that against a guy like mickey gall is i i I can't wait to see him get into a camp that he fits in yeah and train with guys who who he gets along with and all this shit and the post fight uh interview was fucking hilarious when he's like, you're going to give me a hundred grand and think I'm not going to spend it. Like, take that shit out. Take the taxes out before you fucking give me my money. It's fucking like, it's a tale. It's as not how time. it works, Mike. It's a tale as old as time when it comes to fighters not paying taxes on their That's income. That's a lot of sports athletes. Yeah. It, it's great at uh, what they do. Taxes actors, everything. Yeah. But yeah, he's, he's never on. If he's on anything, I'm always like, I, I got five minutes to listen to what Mike Perry has to say. He just always, always a showman. Yeah, dude, it was an amazing fight. I, I'm going the opposite route. I hope he never finds a camp, and I hope he's always just having his girlfriend in his corner because that was. It's hilarious, but it's I, hilarious. He's there's so much potential there. Yeah, if he can just lock it down, he needs to keep the craziness, but he's got to have it directed, and he's got to have somebody like, listen, we'll take care of your finances. You're not going to live in your car anymore, like. We're going to take care of that. You just go do what you do. He needs the right people because he, he has been taken advantage of in the past. And I, I can see how he could be, like, jaded by that fucking shit. Oh, 100%. I think that's why he didn't have a corner here because yeah. he was like, I'm, I need the money and I'm tired of people taking my money and, well, and I, you know, that I, kind of shit. I get it. Like, yeah. But you need someone you can trust in your corner. Yeah. Literally. And there was also your girlfriend. Uh, an exchange there where he had – he used – if he did it by accident, it was a fantastic accident. But he used a head and arm triangle choke to, and he held onto it in the transition to 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 reverse the position and get a mount, almost a full mount. And he's against a guy like Mickey Gall. Like that is High that's level. very that's very uh, impressive of somebody like that's Mike Perry, known as a brawler, to pull something like that on Mickey Gall. It just all around. Everything just worked for Mike Perry. So maybe he should have his girlfriend. Maybe we should just shut the fuck up. It worked. He's yeah. want to know with this strategy. Yeah. Can't it knock it. All right. Then we have what I'm considering a little bit of the lull of the night. Good fight, but compared to the rest, not quite. Yeah, it was kind of a dud. Um, this one. Jan uh, Vellante versus Morris Green. Yeah, there was. There, there, this one was uh, it's a heavyweight fight, so it's not going to be action-packed like you know, the lighter weight classes for the most part. I mean, there's a lot of them that are, but it Valenti caught him with a big shot. Let's just skip to the end of the fight. Yeah. Caught him with a big shot. Green got him in like a, a half head and arm triangle choke, but it wasn't really a head and arm triangle choke. I think that Valente was just so tired. He couldn't fight it off. And he was so exhausted that, had he not been that tired, I don't think he would have got tapped. I agree. And the full mount was there the whole time in the in the exchange. Like he, all he had to do was just a little bit of explosiveness there, but he, yeah, did, he just yeah. didn't have anything left. He, he, yeah, he had zero left to him. This is all cardio. Yeah, a lesson in cardio. And he could have. He, I mean, easier said than done. Could have yeah. finished him, but he had him in the perfect position there. Yeah, and. uh yeah, I think he tapped because he got exhausted. Yeah, I agree. I think that was more from exhaustion. I mean, I could be wrong. It could have just been two big guys. There's no room, but it didn't look good. No, it didn't. I, I mean, we say this all the time, but it's easy to say these kind of things considering I was sitting on the couch having my second cup of coffee and still falling asleep. That's true. But th- that's from the outside perspective. It just wasn't a good look. That fight seemed longer than the last three fights before it it did it did i by the end of the second round i thought the fight was over yeah i, I was kind of excited yeah all right that's because we're spoiled do that we're very spoiled but nothing but phenomenal fights for the past several weeks it's absolutely ridiculous all right then we have brendan allen versus kyle dukas 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 this one was a fucking nutty one too this was a nutty so, one 
blood. Brendan Allen tunes up Kyle. Bleeding with Do- pain. Dawkus? Dawkus. Splits his fucking eye open. Hardcore. Like, bad. Yeah. Bad. Bad split. And looks like he's going to be taking over the fight. But then it fucking comes back around, and Kyle drops Allen at the end of the second. And that was a... That was the fight where I was I was texting uh, my buddy Mo, who trains at Miller Brothers. That's why we were talking about Mickey Gall coming up, which is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was kind of like not paying attention to this one, but I just kept looking up when all the big shit happened. So I, I can't really judge this one. I don't know if it went the right way. I think it did. But this is another one that it was so back and forth. Yeah. I think... Almost all the judges scored this 30-27. There might have been a couple of 29-28s. I, I can't remember. But it could. It was one of those ones where each round was close. But Well, the, that was the other thing, too. Uh, Mike Perry, did somebody? No. What was the fight where somebody scored a round for where the one guy didn't win one round? But he definitely won one round. I think it was this fight. What do you mean? There was a fight here where one of the scorecards was red, and it was somebody didn't win a single win a single round. I think it was this fight. I think one judge gave all three rounds to Allen. Yeah, you might be right with that. I think I'm pretty sure it was because I remember thinking like I know I wasn't paying attention, but that doesn't seem right at all. Well, there was only three decisions, so it was either Perry's fight, Poirier's fight, which wasn't either of those, and it, or it was this one. So it was this one. Yeah. Yeah, then it, and yeah, that's that's the one it was. Unless I'm totally just making that up because it is late. It is kind of late over here in the studio. All right, we're moving on. Real quick, there's not a lot to talk about with this one. Takashi Sato versus Jason Witt. Blasted him. Blasted him. It was quick. It was beautiful. Kadoosh. Kadoosh. Yeah. Right out. Hard shot. Yeah. He wasn't even tired. Big old Bad. smile on his face. Bad. Bad. And then, you know, champion of the weirdest body award <laughs> for... Sean Woodson, strangest frame I've ever seen. In my he life. has a weird body. Right? His legs are thin. Yeah, this one was actually one of the most impressive fights, in my opinion, on this card. Sean Woodson That's a lot. was an undefeated fighter. I mean, like sleeper fight, undefeated fighter, coming in against Julian Erosa. I think they said this is Julian's third stint in the UFC. I don't think he had a contract up until this past Wednesday. Didn't know he was fighting on this card. Took the fight. I was at three days notice, four days notice. Had a cut weight. Comes in against uh, Sean Woodson, an up-and-coming prospect who's i have never seen him fight for. Fucking nasty with his hands, dude. Yeah, he was. Nasty he was. with his hands. Very, um, uh, what's the word? Like, unpredictable and lulls you to sleep with like these just this like constant like smooth motion and then just pops him out there he looks almost like he's throwing things very slowly but he's not it's so weird the way he does that i agree i actually had this thought like as the fight was going on because like he you're right he had like these unorthodox like almost kind of cliche like like hands like like bruce lee hands a cloud yeah i was thinking he's like doing like the drunken monkey fight yeah like like that's the but only way I could put super it. Super effective. He was winning. Yeah, in, super it, effective. Yeah, in my book, he was at least the first two rounds, and I think he was winning the third round up until he got caught. Yeah, you know, the first two rounds, he was de- like Julian. This is another one that was super close. It was super close. Woodson definitely won the first round. Yeah. Second round was a lot closer, and and Erosa started reading a lot. Like his head movement improved greatly, and he was reading the shots coming off of Woodson, so he was slipping a lot, a lot better. The third round, it, it was even more so. And then when he they went to the ground, like he needed a finish. Yeah, I think, yeah, in my yeah. opinion, he needed a finish, and he fucking went for it and got it. it like crazy. he went for it and got it, and I think he got a darts choke, right? I believe he had a darts choke. Yeah, I think. And right. it was so tight, like he rolled over, and I started screaming, "He's got it! He's got it! He's got it!" And then he pinned him. But how fucking nutty is that? Where you go from like you don't have a contract with the UFC to four days ago. You don't know if you're going to get, you know, you're not even a, an employee there. Yeah. And now you're you're an underdog, and you upset on the on a main card. The undefeated prospect. Yeah. Cr- Absolutely fantastic. Insane. 
Fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. You couldn't write a better story. And the, the, the more, the most impressive thing, not the most, one of the most impressive things with this fucking fight was that he never, there was never a point in this fight when Arosa was discouraged. He never took his foot off the gas. He was pressuring Woodson, which is what tired him out. Yeah. And never for a second did it look like he was like, I'm just going to take this for, or like defeated. There was never a second, which when you're down two rounds to none, it's hard to have hope, especially when, you know, upcoming prospect, he's tuning you up, your face is a mess. Fucking awesome. Love it. Yeah. Total it, card was fucking it's, fantastic. It's all, it's all attitude, dude. I mean, it's not all attitude, but it's all attitude. That's what I say when I sit from the couch watching the fights. Oh, it's yeah. I, I'm the best watcher ever. Ever. You know what? That last fight, the main card, I paced. I didn't sit on a couch. I walked back and forth. That's true. You know what? You probably outputted more energy pacing behind that couch than then, those two did in that five round fight. Combined. God damn it. You know what? This is the real people's champ. Um I'll take it. Yeah, I, mean, dude, I don't know how much lo- we're gonna end up getting disappointed I, with the, with a card. And I hate to say it, we're due for a disappointing card, and next weekend's card has three title fights, and I'm getting what? super hyped. No, up. I'm t- I'm, we're I know, cut, I'm we're... getting the bad juju out now. I'm just saying it out loud to get rid of it. To get rid of the bad juju. What are you doing? I'm getting rid of it. We've been blessed with how many fucking good cards in a row, and we gotta keep it going. I'm just saying. Let's get it out there. We're, we're there's no way. You're you're making me nervous here, dude. We're cutting this off before Andy can say anything else. I'm just saying, bro. What do you guys think of these fights? Leave a comment down below, letting us know. Also, Poirier and Hooker. Who do you guys want to see them fight next? There's a lot of options out there, and honestly, I don't even know where to begin. I don't. I don't. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell notifications. You can make sure you get all of our videos. We come out with a ton of content because we are absolutely ridiculous and have no lives. Don't forget to go to BrodownPro.com for a cool-ass BroDown gear. Where we have now officially new D&D shirts. <gasps> oh, snap. If you're into D&D tabletop games, you're a super fucking nerd, go to BrodownPro.com. Rep your class with the new D&D shirts. Shirts. All right, well, we're not putting him in charge of marketing anymore. <laughs> we'll catch you guys next time. You're listening to Bro Down Podcast all fucking day.